Hey everybody, uh, in this video we're going to talk about sequences. Sequences are the introductory idea to sequences and series, and in this specific video we're going to talk about three things. The first thing is going to be just plain and simply what is a sequence. The second thing is going to be uh, some terminology, some 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 variables, some notation that we use frequently frequently with sequences and series. And the third thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at a couple methods or approaches to finding the pattern or what we call the general formula in a sequence. So why don't we get to it and see what we what we can come up with? Okay, so very first thing, what is a sequence? Well, plain and simply, a sequence is just a list of numbers that follow a specific pattern. We might look at these uh, these two different lists of numbers, and here we've got, uh, you can see one, one, two, three, five, eight. Um, and one of the ways, one of the notations that we do, or one of the things that we talk about are term values and term numbers. So this, all of these things here, all of these things here, these are two separate sequences, but these things are called the term values. And sometimes we write this like um, a term value we might write as, let's say, uh, u of one equals one, u of two equals one, u of three equals two, u of four equals three. So notice what I'm doing is I've got all of these numbers listed out here. I, I like, for whatever reason, I don't know why, I like writing them down vertically as opposed to horizontally. But what I'm doing is I'm listing out all of the term values. So the term values are basically the numbers that you're working with. And then over here on the left, we've got u of five is five and u of six is eight. Um, so again, our term values. And then over here, these things, all of these, the position of where they are, the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term, that we call the term position. So we've got the term position and the term value. So uh, again, one, two, three, four. So that's our term position. Now, you notice that I also used the variable u. Now, this is just like when you're talking about function notation, you can call something f of x or g of x or h of x. Uh, this is just another way to distinguish one sequence from another. So as I work on this one over here, now I could, of course, use just different colors, but I could also say that u of 1 equals 7, u of 2 equals 15, u of 3 equals 23, and so on u of five equals 39. So again, here are my term values, nothing's changed there, and these here are my term positions. So in the first position, I've got a value of seven. In the second position, I've got a value of 15, the third, 23, and so on. Okay, so, um, and actually, you know what? I, just, to, to, just to change it up, I thought I, was, I said I was gonna do that and I didn't actually do it. I'm gonna make this T. So sometimes you can actually call these other things. You don't have to use U. I tend to stick with the same, the same one or two uh, um, notations. I use U and I use T. T for term, U because IB likes to use the, the, the U variable. So there we go. Uh, term values, term positions, key ideas, key uh, uh, notation and phraseology. Now, uh, how do we actually find the pattern, that's the next thing that we want to do, is we want to find the pattern for each of these two things. So uh, let's start with the orange one here. Now you might already notice this. Um, this one is called the Fibonacci sequence. This one's called the Fibonacci sequence, but you may have already noticed that down here, one plus one equals two. All right, of course. And here you might have noticed that one plus two equals three, and here, two plus three equals five and three plus five equals eight. So the pattern seems to be that in and here there's nothing before this one. So here we might even say up above, we might even say zero or nothing plus one equals one. Now I don't know if I would really do that because we're kind of including a new value there, but let's let's just let's just do it for kicks this time around. Um, so what you might be noticing is that these two 
equal this one. So these two equal this one. When I add those two together, I get this. So if I add, if I take u1 and I add u2, u1 plus u2, I get u3. If I take u2 plus u3, I get u4. If I take 1 plus 2, I get 3. So u2 plus u3 equals u4. u3 plus u4 equals u5. u4, five, uh, right? You see, you see what's going on here. u5 uh, equals u6. So now, when I want to find this general formula, again, we're talking about a general formula. So I've found that it looks like the previous two terms add up to this term. So I'm going to call the one that I'm at the current term, right? So that's my current term. So I'm going to call that u of n. Now, n could be any number. In this case, n is 6. So what do I get if n is 6? What do I have to add to it before that? I have to take 1 less than 6. So this would be u of n minus 1. And to go back even further, if I want to get u of 4, I'd have to subtract two things to get there. So I'd take u of whatever this number is and subtract it two times, or two uh, a value of 2. Notice here, 5, I subtract 2, I get 3. 5, I subtract 1, I get 4. So here I've got u of n minus 2. Now, this is our general formula. Here is our general formula for the Fibonacci sequence. u of n equals u of n minus 2 plus u of n minus 1. And this is called a term-to-term -term, uh, term -term formula. Term-to-term, -term, yeah, term-to-term -term formula. Term-to-term. Term. Let's spell term right. Term. And so this term to term, and sometimes you'll also hear this called uh, recursive. Sometimes we call it recursive. Now, a recursive formula is generally the easiest formula to find because it uses the, the terms in the sequence. So we just say, ah, I'm gonna use the numbers that I have here, I'm gonna find the pattern, and this thing is based on something that I do with the previous with the previous term. And that's great. If I want to keep on going, if I want to find, whoops, if I want to keep on find if I want to find the, the seventh term, I know I could take three, uh, eight plus five, and so on. The problem is what happens if I want to know what is the what is the uh, 50th term. Now, for this Fibonacci sequence and to find this general pattern, if I want to know what uh, u of 50 was, I would need to know what u of 49 was and what u of 48 was. But I don't know u of 49 or 48. So I would have to go back and find out 47 and 46 and 45 and 44 and all the way back down to this or I would have to count this up and do this pattern all the way up to the 50th term. So the term to term is often the easiest pattern. The recursive is often the easiest pattern to find, but it's the least helpful. Because if I wanna know something like this, I'm not gonna be able to get there. So ease of use uh, or ease of finding, but not very useful in our overall pattern or process. So what's the other option? The other option is called position to term. Position to term. And that's what we're gonna do for this other, uh, this other uh, uh, sequence here. So position to term, uh, which we also call explicit, sometimes we call this one explicit instead of recursive. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out what happens as we go from the position to the value. So we're gonna try and generalize it in that way. So let's take a look at this one. So as we go from as we go from seven to 15, it looks like we are adding eight. So we're gonna add eight. As we go from 15 to 23, 15 plus five is 20, another three is eight. That's adding eight. 31 to 39 is adding 8. Okay, great. So now I want to figure out, is there a way 
that I can use this eight and this term number to get this value. So that's the trick. So let's see, so I want to use, so I'm gonna use this eight and this term value. So the first thing I would say, well, let's do eight minus one, that equals seven, perfect, got it. But we need to check to see if this works for all of them. So uh, what about two? Um, well, eight, I need to get to 15. Well, if I, sub, if I multiply this by two and I subtract one, I'll get 15, right? Eight times two is 16 minus one is 15. Um, and if I notice again, well, wait a minute, eight times three is 24, 24 minus one. Okay, so now I'm starting to see my pattern here is the, 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 the difference or the, the thing that's happening out here that's consistently happening. It's following that pattern. The same thing is happening. But what I'm using is I'm using this term value and I, to calculate this. And I could even go back to this first term, eight times one, right? If I take eight times one and subtract one, I get seven. So now, and if I keep on doing this, right? If, I, if we keep on doing this, eight times four is 32 minus one, eight times five is 40 minus one is 39. Okay, so we found our pattern. So now, how do we write this as a general formula? So again, like over here, we said u of n, now we're talking about t. So we're gonna say t of n, all right, so here we go, t of n, the, the general formula. t of n is equal to eight times our term number, our term number. So I'm just gonna use, since since I'm saying this is my term number, right? We said here, these are our term numbers, these are our term numbers. So if I wanna go down here and find the nth term, I'm gonna put my term number in there and I'm going to subtract one. So what I've just done is I have found a general pattern, a general formula for this. And this one is again called position to term because I'm talking about the position of the value within the sequence and I'm applying some common thing that I'm doing to all of it uh, to calculate that actual value. So if again, if we put five in here, eight times five is 40 minus one, 39. So if I wanna now find the 50th term, well, I, I, I'll have to do a little bit of scratch work, but eight times 50, what's eight times 50? Eight, zero, 400 minus one. So I now know that T of 50 is gonna be eight times 50 minus one, which should be, if I'm doing it correctly, 399, I believe it is. So, um, so there we go. So that's how we find the general formula for a position to term. Now, again, the position to term is often more difficult to find because you have to do a little bit more legwork. You have to dig a little bit deeper for that pattern. Um, but it's gonna be a lot more useful for you and a lot more helpful. And in the future videos, we're really going to focus on using position to term. Now, when you're working on this stuff, you might start falling into this trap and using the term to term but don't try, try to avoid that as best you can. You wanna to try to avoid using term to term and, and really focus on going uh, position to term. So uh, that's it for this video. I hope that was helpful and um, we'll talk to you in the next video.